guys both here this is common mistakes that divine for and below support players make all the time first we're going to talk about this ancient four bench it turned out to be more of the jazz party the first mistake we're talking about here is slow reactions if you hover over Jelenja's camera, you can see that she goes to the bottom lane, sees that Magnus is being engaged, but eventually goes back to his own camera, don't see anyone there anymore, and instead of thinking, well, Raiden is fighting my Magnus, as amusing as this fight might look, there's absolutely nothing I can do for the Magnus right now. He wastes like 2-3 seconds just watching there, and it might look minor, but if Ange was there sooner, maybe Tusk could destroy the cogs faster and they could follow up with the stun. Getting first blood or just hurting Tinker way more, forcing the instant use of the first cell, Tinker first or himself. What happens instead is that Tinker loses his rune but loses no HP and he ends up destroying Volker in the mid lane. The second mistake is slightly complicated, it's not necessarily a mistake but an oversight. I'm going to put a Venge on the same spot the Dire Venge was and use this Enigma to showcase how the enemy fog works against her. You can see that if Enigma walks around this area, he has vision of Venge. At the same time, Venge's position is not bad because if you look at an offlaner just blocking the lane, he will be more towards the left, probably not revealing Venge. That being said, there are better spots to hide, like inside that tree for instance. But since the range creep drew aggro to her, there's definitely vision from somewhere else where she is. There was no ping and I was playing that game, I was Tusk and I never did she said anything. I have a video on this topic alone if you're interested. Range creeps drawing aggro when there's enemy wards around where you're hiding. The next mistake is based on trading. Venge had the information that cogs were used once the creeps hit the lane, and that's a good call to trade hits with Clockwork. She makes sure not to draw aggro when she goes for the trade, but it's way too careless. She is basically auto attacking after the stun, knowing that there will be cogs eventually. Instead of trying to bait the cogs, she keeps attacking, gets trapped, takes a lot of unnecessary damage. You can clearly see how unfavorable the trade was for her, and that forces a very early clarity and puts Venge towards the next mistake. If we go back and take a look on the creep wave when Venge got out of the lane, we can count 5 melee creeps for Radiant and 3 for Dire. The lane is completely fine for PA. More than that, it's in PA's interest that the lane is pushing slightly because the equilibrium spot at that location is not optimal. Instead, what Venge does is pull twice. The first pull only gets a couple of creeps and she makes sure to go for another one, completely ruining the creep equilibrium. PA is a hero with very little base damage that doesn't want to learn blur level 2 to take less damage. It hurts the carry a lot, but that's not even the main point. Venge could be correctly zoning Clockwork right now, which would not only mean that her carry doesn't have to use any region, it would mean that Clock would get zero experience and burn through his region. Instead, this greedy play grants Clock level 3 with no form of offlane pull. It's just insane, and yeah, maybe Venge got one level, but she's a support, you're giving experience to an offlaner in the exchange of a support, it doesn't make any sense to do this. Now we're talking about Archon 5 Lyra. First mistake is his positioning after the room. There are a ton of possibilities for a support after room time to do. From Courier Snipe to harassing mid to checking the air creep wave to tank the range creep. And what the Archon Lion does is stand close to the tower while he probably Facebooks.
This is another clip of lack of efficiency. As Shadow Shaman stacks the Ancient Camp, it feels like he didn't know whether the leash range of the Ancients would be the same if he runs towards the mid lane and helps his team, uh, or if he just does it, does it like this. And the answer is yes, you can as easily stack them towards that direction if you go for it at 53-54. Since he doesn't, pay attention to what happens. His team gets the kill, but right at the end, Lena kills Viper. Something that shouldn't happen if he was a little bit more efficient with his movements. It's a blood money. I lost cars at a loss for words. Trying to keep my tone down. What I'm saying is absurd. Unusual. The context unique. Buried in the depths of metaphorical speech. A hidden message. Pull the infinite strings. Reconnect the ends and pretend to justify the means. His response to that death is like, well, I think I should ward my mid so he doesn't die. When not only the fault for the death was his, but he also overcompensates and uses two wards in pretty much the same location. At this point in the game, considering that only Doom was bought the entire game, the rotations will come from the top lane, which means that the first ward was more than enough. He goes for this very underwhelming ward that could be used on the Ancient Cliff so that he can get bounty runes from the Dire team without feeling afraid or just used anywhere else, really. Seems small, but in Divine and Upwards, the lack of one ward can make or break a smoke gank, a team fight, or result in the loss of a core because he didn't spot a smoke gank from the enemy team. Within the dust covered land behind the city, the street lights are dim and the fog is always walking with me. It's not the new eyes adjusted to the scene, flickering on and off, it's just the daily routine. I grab a hold of time, forcing not to leave. The weeds grow sporadic in my home is where I'm quarantined. Thinking less, move the top to where the fuel rests. Giving all I got to breathe life to the common sense. Moving the top to where the fuel rests. Giving all I got to breathe life to your silhouette. Silhouette, 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 silhouette. Another mistake we can pinpoint, and this one develops easily out of not using time well, like we saw as he stacked the camp before, is not getting level 6 fast enough. Shadow Shaman walks towards the bottom lane with no clear purpose, he doesn't seem to want to get a level 6, he just stands there, then walks awkwardly towards the Ancients, then he has to wait to stack them, he stacks it and he literally does nothing for a long time, and the reason he cannot do anything is because he's not level 6. But he's not level 6 because he's not tying the Ancient stacking that he's trying to pull off with other meaningful things to do in the map and that further delays his impact, which comes with Serpent Ward. As he again walks towards the top lane without any plan, I want to point out another mistake. I know that he wants to get Arcanes, or else he wouldn't have that much safe gold, but in my opinion, people really overestimate Arcanes on this hero and underestimate Trankos. For instance, he did not spend one point in mana ever since the 7 minute mark. Does he really need Arcanes? And like part of the and part of the fact he didn't spend any mana is because he's super slow. Maybe with Trankos and some clarities to deal with the mana, he could have actually go for plays. But even if he couldn't, how does Arcanes help here? He could buy smokes with this gold, more wards, uh, uh, do anything that will give him experience, and then level six, and then the game will just like start snowballing towards his team. He's holding on a lot of his net worth percentage-wise, not doing anything with it. When he finds anti mage here, I'm almost positive that with the move speed from Trankos, he would be able to land Shackles. That would not kill anti mage, do not get me wrong, but would allow him to use the first kill afterwards, and then that AM has to go back to base, has to fire himself more region, it sets him back a lot. And this is how he create impact, you know, just damaging a core like anti mage in this part of the game just makes him delay his battle fury, just makes him do other stuff. By saving this gold, he doesn't do anything. When he finds an opportunity to do something, he can't just because of his items. Instead, he just spends 135 mana to kill this one creep, and that's it. Now, this is a Legend 2 Shadow Shaman. This clip starts wrong right off the bat. Take a look at Shadow Shaman and Iodair, then look at the path they choose to follow their troll. Instead of going the other way around and maybe actually surprising Shadowfin, they get a very suboptimal route. They don't get there in time, I mean Io does because he's Io, but uh, Shadow Shaman was definitely not there in time, and maybe he could actually help them get a kill. The pathing issue even continues after that, he takes completely unnecessary damage here, if he wanted to go for that kill as he goes, he had to ward the high ground, and since he didn't, going towards that path makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. 
In this other footage, we can see another common one. He knows Doom is bottom, he's waiting on the high ground, but as Doom goes towards him, look what he does. A high mower player would stand on the high ground and start attacking as Doom goes up the ramp. Instead, he goes down the stairs, showing himself, then he misclicks, ends up hitting two right clicks, when in reality, he could go for at least three right clicks into shackles, into more right clicks with Ayo. Overall, a lot of lacking in mechanical skill wise, I would say. Hey guys, this was up for today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of it, please remember vote with your likes. Also, if you want to see more of it right now, this video is going to be on Pagana quite soon, so the link is down below if you want to check it out. I am streaming every day and I'm going to be streaming the DAC qualifier, so if you're interested, check the comment section where I will actually write which games I'm casting and you can tune in. Remember that if you have Amazon Prime and you subscribe to my channel, you're gonna get one month of Pagana for free and by just watching the stream, you actually get crisps. The crisps are my stream currency and uh, at the end of the month on February, you're going to be able to buy raffle tickets that will give you access to maybe one arcana and maybe some coaching sessions that I will be giving away. And there's even a bigger benefit if you want to be a sub. I'm going to make a new series where people, the subs in that case, send me footage of a team fight and I'm going to analyze that team fight. I'm coaching via Gamer Sensei, the link is down below. And if you want to see, and if you want to learn more about me, you know, there's Twitter there. Hope you guys had a fantastic day. Bye.